From the Ministry of the Presidency in Georgetown, this is This Week with the President. Welcome to This Week with the President, a news magazine which provides you with an in-depth look at the policies, programs and work of the President of Guyana in his quest to realize the good life for all Guyanese. I'm your host, Gomiti Gangadin. Thank you for joining us. In the highlights of this week, President Granger says Office of the Presidency must be protected regardless of who is in power. Government working to ensure forced readiness for border security. Relationship with ExxonMobil must be based on accountability, openness and aligned interests. These stories and more on This Week with the President. In April this year, an allegation was made that there was a plot to assassinate His Excellency, President David Granger. Questions were later raised about the investigative approach employed by the Guyana Police Force. On June 30, Minister of State Mr. Joseph Harmon announced that in keeping with Section 2 of the Commission of Inquiry Act, the President had ordered an inquiry into the allegations to be headed by retired Police Commissioner Mr. Paul Slow. Section 2 of the Act states, and I quote, The President may issue a commission appointing one or more commissioners and authorizing such commissioner or commissioners to inquire into any matter in which an inquiry would, in the opinion of the President, be in the public welfare. End of quote. This week, the Commission handed over its report on Thursday to the President, where he said that it is in the national interest that the Office of the Presidency be protected, regardless of who is in power. Additionally, President Granger said that the Commission of Inquiry into the alleged assassination plot is aimed at identifying the weaknesses and deficiencies which may exist that can compromise the safety of the sitting President and his family. I think that the the office of president is one that should enjoy the protection of the security services and, and uh, any reports of threats against or uh, any risk to the president's life or the life of the uh, immediate relatives of the president, such as the president's uh, the first lady or the president's children, deserve to be properly and thoroughly investigated. It's not a question of fear. I think it's, it's good practice to ensure that the president is safe. The head of state noted that these commissions of inquiry are important since they help to uncover the truth and to correct malpractice and abuses in the system. The president's sentiments were shared by Minister of State Mr. Joseph Harmon, who said that it is a matter of public interest and it is the prerogative of the president to establish a commission of inquiry where he sees it fit to protect the people of Guyana. Mr. President, this is a matter of public interest. It's um, a, a, an investigation into an alleged attempt to assassinate a sitting president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, and therefore it's not a, a laughing matter. Uh, some persons who are in public life are want to believe that this is a matter where the court the officers could have just been called and given a scolding. This is a very serious matter and the matter is taken very seriously by the administration. The Commission's terms of reference had included investigating and reviewing the full range of the actions and responses of the Ghana Police Force to the reports and the extent to which such actions were conducted or executed with due diligence. It was also tasked to determine whether any person, and in particular officers of the Ghana Police Force, had information before and after the reports were made of the alleged assassination plot and whether that information was communicated to any superior authority and report on what official action was taken on information received and if there was due diligence by the Ghana police force officers in the investigation. 
President Granger, in November 2016 on the Ministry of the Presidency's television program, The Public Interest, said that while the Ghana Police Force had not received the attention it deserved in the past, his administration will be working to make it a sound professional organization. He had noted that the government will act as it is deemed necessary, and this will entail some changes in the current administration of the force, in addition to several other measures. We, we reckon that uh, the, the action that we've taken to bring the British security sector reform team into Guyana is the correct action, because we cannot proceed in this country without a, with an unreformed Guyana police force. And some of the actions which are taking place convince me that the Guyana police force has to be reformed, and we are going to do just that. While the Ministry of Foreign Affairs remains at the first line of defense with regard to external threats, the Ghana Defense Force is critically important to ensuring total national defense, defending the nation's borders and maintaining internal security. As Guyana continues to deal with external threats and intensified border tensions with neighboring Venezuela, its military, being the primary organization responsible for border protection, is now more relevant than ever. The force last week completed the field tactical exercise Ironweed, which was aimed at directly assessing the operational readiness and capability of the Ghana Defense Force in close and open country operations. Commander-in-Chief President David Granger congratulated the troops, noting that the exercise has served to reaffirm and reassure the Defense Board and the people of Guyana that the force is always ready to fulfill its mission to protect Guyana's territorial integrity and is in a state of preparedness for any security threat, which may arise even as government continues to make significant investments in re-equipping the force. And we have challenges to face in this country. And a big challenge is the security of our borders. And this exercise, Iron Weed, is an exercise that is dedicated to ensuring that Guyana is ready to protect its borders. And this is something you must never forget. Guyana has over 3,000 kilometers of borders, and we are a small population. But in so doing, in protecting our borders, we have to ensure that we have the mobility and we have the correct deployment so that every part of our borders will be secure. With the recent discovery of a twin-engine Beechcraft aircraft in Upper Tack to Upper Essequibo Region 9 on August 13th and another abandoned aircraft in September 2016, just miles away from the area, President Granger said that it is important, now more than ever, that Ghana takes the necessary steps to protect its borders. Soldiers of Guyana, we have a very complex task before us. We have to protect our environment, our fragile environment. People can come across our borders with road building equipment unknown to the center and build airstrips and maybe get Guyanese to collaborate with them to remove our precious minerals and other commodities. So, the Defense Force has to take on a greater role in protecting our territory, protecting our environment from degradation and from despoliation. We've got to preserve the green character of our country. The Commander-in-Chief noted that in spite of Ghana's extensive borders, complex terrain and limited infrastructure in the hinterland, which makes deployment extremely difficult, the Ghana Defense Force and citizens at large must remain vigilant, particularly since the green state transition on which the country has embarked could give rise to illegal activities such as pollution of waterways and damage to protected areas. Recognizing the force's limited human and financial resources and in keeping with the provisions of the Defense Act, the President spoke of the important role which the reserve force plays. In 2015, during a meeting with the members of the force at Base Camp Ayangana, where he had announced the total national defense policy, the head of state had committed government's support to the reorganization and strengthening of the force on five pillars – personnel, readiness, infrastructure, morale and equipment, with emphasis on the Air Corps, the Guyana Coast Guard and the Engineer Corps. 
The re-equipment process has begun, and following the final attack, President Granger reviewed a display of new field equipment, which has been acquired by the force. This included a combat support field medical hospital and communications apparatus. Today you saw some e improved equipment insofar as our communication is concerned. Uh, we have some radios now with the capacity to be able to do text, do data. Um, it's much improved than what we had the, the, uh, the Harris radios which were there before. Um, these radios are um, of Australian origin and they in fact um, have to be acquired on a government-to-government -government basis. We have some on tests and during the exercise I'm advised by the signal officer that they perform exceedingly well. The capacity also for charging the batteries by solar allows for, um, for a longer range and a longer period of time before you have to recharge. So all in all, I believe the communication aspect of the force, that equipment is basically taking us to a, a next level. As far as the combat support units are concerned, the medical corps we would have seen on display a complete uh, field hospital, which included the, a dentist and the full dentistry. Minister Harmon, who serves as a secretary to the Defense Board, explained that this year the Army has been better equipped as the government is working with local and international partners to build capacity and strengthen security. The President has spoken about total national defense. And that means that our soldiers must be prepared to defend all of Guyana. That is to say, initially, our borders and to support the civil powers in, the, in an emergency. But the primary consideration is the defense of our borders, as you would well know that because of the sheer size and the length of our borders, that we cannot have soldiers in every point. So that the training which you have is actually now focusing on that reality that there are huge gaps in our defense system that has to be covered and our soldiers are being trained in that regard. You would have heard the president speak about equestrian training. What that means is that all of our officers now will be trained to ride horses, the um, soldiers will be trained to ride horses um, and we will increase the level of uh, the number of horses in the force so we can have horseback patrols that will supplement the vehicular patrol, the air patrols, and the fixed bases which we have in the interland. So that's going to be a major development in 2017 going on to 2018. Chief of Staff of the Ghana Defense Force, Brigadier Patrick West, said that the lessons of exercise ironweed must be utilized to further improve the operational efficiency. The GDF, as we continue to evolve, will continue to practice not only in this arena, but in other arenas to ensure we build proficiencies in every area. We hope that the force can do total deployments in close country operations, total deployments for internal security operations, which are exercises to be planned differently. And as we build into the model of exercises for the future years, we will further expand our platoon, company, and battalion training with more emphasis placed on personal skills of the soldier. As we shape the force for total national defense in this era, we hope that the agencies of the state will be more involved in the process of development and security to ensure that we can usher Guyana into this 21st century in a successful way. On March 10, 2017, the government of Guyana appointed Dr. Jan Mangal, an expert in offshore and civil engineering, as petroleum advisor in the Ministry of the Presidency. A Guyanese by birth, Dr. Mangal brought with him a wealth of technical expertise and experiences in the area of oil and gas development. This was one of the steps taken by the government to streamline efforts and to ensure that sound decisions, which will benefit the Guyanese people, are taken in the management of the emerging oil and gas sector. 
As Exxon forges ahead, President Granger has made it clear that the government will be working with ExxonMobil to develop a long-term relationship which is founded on transparency, accountability, openness and aligned interests for the good of Guyana. During a meeting with the visiting delegation of ExxonMobil executives at State House to discuss matters related to the status of exploratory and appraisal work in the Starbrook block, as well as the relationship between the government and the company this week, the president said that at the end of the process, Guyanese must be able to view the development of a petroleum industry as one that is beneficial to the national interest. The president said, open quote, we are at the start of an oil and gas industry and we want to ensure that our people are involved. We are happy with the way things are going so far and we want to assure you of the government's commitment to transparency and accountability. We take decisions at the cabinet level and then those decisions are taken to the National Assembly and we do not see that process changing. All Guyanese must feel involved in the process, end of quote. In this regard, he noted that it is important that there are regular and accurate announcements and matters pertaining to the development of the sector, adding that Ghanis must be involved, especially in the mainstream opportunities which are available in the industry. Open quote. We have got to keep the public informed to ensure that civil society does not feel that there is some underhand relationship which is injurious to the country. We want to make the right steps and we are looking to see that the population gets the education they need to participate in this industry. We are looking to ensure that this industry generates employment for our people and as part of our partnership, I hope we can have a program which can help to educate Guyanese on this industry. End of quote. More than this, however, the government will be seeking to fortify the justice system by decree of important pieces of legislation and strengthening the capacities of the related areas. Mr. Darren Woods, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of ExxonMobil Cooperation, in an invited comment, described the meeting as fruitful, noting that the government's commitment to transparency and accountability was discussed in detail. He said that the administration's commitment is welcomed since the company's interests and aims are in alignment with this. I think it's a very productive conversation that we had. Uh, talked about a range of issues, opportunities. I think the government is very focused on making sure that as we look to develop the resources that we do it in the right way to benefit the community and the people of Guyana. We're very committed to that ourselves and so lots of good discussion and dialogue about how best to do that for the benefit of ExxonMobil government and the people of Guyana. Uh, lots of opportunities, lots of uh, good discussion. Mr. Wood said that ExxonMobil remains committed to its investments in Guyana and is swiftly moving ahead with its production plans. President Granger has been consistent in advocating for and working towards improved access to quality education for all of Guyana's children. He believes that education is the tool which can be used to reverse the cycle of poverty, develop communities and transform regions into economic hubs. From the boats, buses, bicycles, books and breakfast or 5Bs program, the president had gone further and established the National Endowment for Science and Technology or NEST program to provide funding for emphasis to be placed on science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Now we take a look at the president's diary. In keeping with this commitment, President David Granger has pledged the government's support for ongoing educational programs being implemented by the Diocese of Guyana. The president made these remarks at a special church service held at the Christ Church Parish on Waterloo Street to celebrate the 175th anniversary of the establishment of the Diocese of Guyana. The Diocese, through the foresight of our first bishop, established Queen's College as early as 1844, two years after he became bishop. And later, the very appropriately named Bishop's High School. And to this day, Queen's College and Bishop's High School continue to reflect the high standards of their Anglican founders. The diocese can be assured of my government support for the church's educational efforts. 
just as I have supported Hindu and Islamic schools through the National Endowment for Science and Technology. I recently met Bishop Charles and assured him I would support the Anglican Church in its own educational efforts. The pledge came as the president noted that religious organizations can play an integral role in the development of communities and by extension the country. Therefore, the state looks to them for a partnership in the eradication of poverty, the fostering of social cohesion and the creation of a better life for all Guyanese. The diocese deserves our gratitude for its service to women and youth. I'm not sure which is the first diocese or church to establish a diocesan youth center. But this diocese did so. It also serves the poor and the needy. Guyana applauds the episcopacy, the clergy, and the laity for the propagation of the gospel in Guyana. The head of state noted that the diocese occupies a prominent place and plays a pivotal role in public and private life, as he noted that Anglicans constitute almost 7% of Ghana's population. Anglicanism, he said, has transcended race, class, and creed, and has deep roots in almost all communities, with churches in every hinterland and coastal region, pioneering missions among Africans, Amerindians, Chinese, and East Indians. Growing up in Esikobo, at Bartica, in Burbis at Wim, and in Demerara here in Georgetown. I never had to travel more than 30 minutes from my home to reach an Anglican church. So ubiquitous were they in those times. The Diocese of Guyana also is home to some of the most elegant, the most spectacular churches including, of course, the iconic Cathedral of St. George, which adorns our $100 currency note. The diocese, therefore, is important at the national, institutional, and personal levels. This church particularly has been the spiritual home of my own family for over a century. I was baptized here 72 years ago. I was confirmed, and I married Sandra, my wife, 47 years ago, right here in Christ Church. And from time to time, the parish priest would get a glimpse of me as I pay a visit to worship here. The president has committed and supported the education programs for a number of religious and non-religious organizations and has presented $1 million checks to several schools to improve computer and science laboratories. The schools included Queen's College, Bishop's High, St. Rose's High, St. Joseph High and St. Stanislaus College, Anna Regina Multilateral, President's College, Rosignol Secondary, Burby's High School, Three Miles Secondary in Bartica, and the Mackenzie High School in Linden. Now we take a look at the President's Diary. On Saturday evening, President Granger hosted a reception for the executives of the National Tushaus Council, the NTC, and the residents of the hinterland who participated in the week-long NTC conference, where Chairman of the NTC, Mr. Joel Fredericks, said that the council is grateful to the president and the administration for the independence and respect they have afforded it in the management of its affairs. Mr. Frederick said that this is the first time that a government has allowed the NTC to function as it should and make its own decisions, as he committed to ensuring that the NTC and its members work with the government to brainstorm solutions to address the issues raised. I would like to extend a heartfelt thanks to His Excellency and his government, his ministers, for supporting the National to Show Council over the six days. I think you should put your hands together for them. <laughs> Mr. President, indeed it was a six days of hard work. We listened to the issues of the peoples. 
We document them. We have them on record. And we will work with your government to help address the issues and needs of the indigenous peoples of this country. Tonight, it's history because first time in Guyana, government past and present has given the NTC a degree of space to operate freely. Anthony Vargas said, it is important to remember where you come from and to celebrate it. To remember where you came from is part of where you are going. That must have been the president's thinking as he returned to his alma mater, Queen's College, on Thursday to address the incoming first formers of the premier institution, where he urged them to live up to the standards, morals and values of the institution for the good of Guyana. President Granger, who is a member of the QC alumni, urged the new students to make the best of their journey at the 172-year-old institution, noting that the school's values, morals, culture, and expectations of conduct can help to mold them into productive citizens who can contribute to the growth and development of the country. Today is very much the first day of the rest of your lives. Entering Queen's College is a transformative experience and your life won't be the same again. You're entering a college with a 172-year-old history. QC has much to be proud of. And let me speak about four aspects of your life and service, your stewardship here at Queen's College that you will do well to remember. The first is the college culture. The head of state said that every school can offer the same values as Queen's College once their administrations commit to upholding the same tenets of respect, good conduct, culture and values. Even as he continues to push for greater access to quality education throughout the country, President Granger said that it is his wish for Guyana that every region can boast such a standard-bearing educational institute which can produce the human resources needed to propel Guyana into prosperity. This is your land and the education that you receive in this college will prepare you better to take possession of this great land through the culture that is inculcated here, through your own conduct, through the character that will be molded here, and through your love of country. I congratulate you on entering this great college. You have a wonderful opportunity you all know that it's a competitive exam, although privately I would hope that every region could have a Queen's College. I hope that every region could have a school of excellence. I know QC, and I know that many of you would like to feel that QC is unique, but I, as a parent, as a president, as an alumnus, I would like to hope that in every region we could have something, a college, an institution, which is comparable to Queen's College. What a wonderful country Guyana would be. Ms. Jackie Ben, headmistress of the college, in her brief remarks, said that the president's visit is welcomed and appreciated as it demonstrates his commitment to making Guyana an education nation. It shows that he cares about education and the development of young people. But in addition to that, it also reflects his pride and love for his alma mater. Queen's College is committed to maintaining a standard of excellence. 
With that, we have come to the end of this week's edition of This Week with the President. Thank you for joining me. For regular updates on the Ministry of the Presidency, go to our website at www.motp.gov.gy, like our Facebook page, Ministry of the Presidency, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MOTP Guyana. Do have a safe and productive rest of the week. Guyana, goodbye.